Okay, love you too, man. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, who is next, Avery? Next we have Nordy in Oregon. Nordy in Oregon. Oh, yeah. Hey, Nordy. How are you, Nordy? I'm good. How are you? What's up, man? I'm great. Not much. I'm really good. It's good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. How's our delay? We okay yeah. today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not hearing it too bad on my end, but I guess I have a little bit on the line that does happen occasionally. Uh, yeah, I just I just don't want to talk nice. over you while while I'm asking questions. So, <laughs> okay, you go first. You start. I, all right, I've been in the silent green room here. I haven't been able to hear what's going. On. How is Julian doing? I want to ask that first. Julian is a miracle child he is so potent and powerful this kid blows my mind his love for the grateful dead is unchallenged by anyone i've ever met in my life i i'm telling you it almost makes me believe that he's been here with us before because he loves the scene so much and uh he won my heart with his love for the big steve hour but not only that he is fighting a thing that any adult would be so backed off by. It's the toughest that it gets as far as a health challenge. And yeah, he has you. stood up to it. With that smile and that countenance of his, it comes through every way in his pictures. And it just is endearing us. And anybody who's listening to the show and get to know him and heard him, they're going to hear him again because we're going to keep touch with this guy because he's special. And he's no different than any one of us except he has courage and he has a heart full of love. And we should all learn from that. You know, sometimes they say a child will lead us. And this is one of those cases, man, because, you know, uh, it, it's just inspirational. And thank yeah, you for asking. Me indeed. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah, I'm always curious, and I'm always backing him. So it's very, very yeah, cool. He still needs our yeah. prayers and our, our everything, our healing. Uh, we got to still send that all to him because he needs it all. But I know everybody is such good-hearted people that listen to the show and they care about each other. We we got a great thing here with the "You got me and I got you," which is goes back to something that Jerry and I used to say to each other a lot. Because it's an important thing to know that somebody's got your back. You know, the buddy system, it works. Nice. What else? Hell yeah. What else you got? Uh, I was just going to say, like, Phil Tour this summer has been going off. He's mixed up the friends in his band so many times, and all the shows have been just fierce. Um, yeah, yeah. Off the going on keys, like, wow, like, wow. Yeah, he's amazing, and uh, I got to play with, you know, watch him play at uh, Skull and Roses. He was the headliner the yep. last day there, and he's just incredible, man. You know, he's right on the money all the time, as he always was, and uh, he, he, he mixes up his band. He gives a lot of people a chance to play with him, his son, and, uh, you know, Graham, and uh, a lot of great guitar players. He tries them out, and he moves around, and has incredible stamina and uh, he's been doing some incredible shows out there getting good reviews and wow it's just mind-blowing how strong he is now you know because there were times when i would never have thought he could do that but he sure has done it and he does a great job with it he gives a good show every time and it's Hell, not yeah. easy it's not easy it, believe me that's a young man's sport anybody tells you different you know Bobby will talk about that all the time how yeah when you're young you can do this but you gotta stay in shape in your own way and your own <laughs> determination mentally and physically and he certainly is an example of that both those guys are and all of them so it's Absolutely. amazing it's amazing the miracle of music Oh, yes. So, so true. Um, so I heard you mention a couple of weeks ago to some another caller that Phil took a drop at almost every show he ever played. Like I've read his book. I've read your book and I don't remember hearing that. Is that a like a pretty true statement? I mean, I know it came from you. So that but. is very true. That is very true. And, you know, of course, there were some nights he didn't. But mostly 
I would say 98% of the time he did take psychedelics. And he loved it. He loved to play that way. And he didn't ever stop. When everybody else had long retired from taking those, you know, because to take yeah. so much LSD, it shows as we did, it really uh, is a taxing thing sometimes. You know, you have to work. You've got to be on the job. And uh, it's it was okay. It worked for us to do that, and it gave you energy. That was the beauty of it. It gave you pure energy. Uh, some people, I'm sure, would argue about it, but when you take LSD a lot, you get to you know, steer your course a little better than when, when it's random. And so it was always um, Owsley acid, a drop of that that he would take. He tried other stuff, but, you know, usually came back to that in the show. And right up to the end, he was taking those drops. So it's a beautiful Brad. thing. Brad, very cool. Very, very cool. But, Thank you. Know, his, nickname, really his, his nickname going back to the... Uh, hate Ashbury was Reddy Kilowatt. Reddy Kilowatt was the guy, the electric uh, standard for Pacific <laughs> Gas and Electric. So he was Reddy Kilowatt. That was his nickname. And he sort of looked like him for a while there. He was real skinny. And uh, he just had that glow going all the time. You know? <laughs> we had those stickers around the house when I was a kid at my grandparents' place. <laughs> the Reddy Kilowatt sticker. <laughs> And he was fun, fun to take acid trips with him. I did a few of them in Europe and other places we, where we weren't working. And we would have a great time just talking about stuff and getting deep into cycles of life, time, and nature, and the affinity to the universe. Because he loved to talk about all that stuff. And he was a great teacher. He taught me a lot. He, he still does. Uh, he's well-read and uh, self-taught mostly, as all of us were. But uh, also paid attention I love to it. life. Paid attention to life, and he he would set me straight on things that because he was older than me, you know, and so he could set you straight on things where I would think I was uh, would talk about things in the fifties as a, because when I was younger than him, I thought, wow, this is so cool. And he would set me straight. He said, hey man, that was pretty straight, and he explained it from a different angle. And I say, oh yeah, you're right, you know. <laughs> and interesting, uh, very interesting cat to hang with and Very. talk with and a really a good hearted person too very cool yeah. thanks for that Phil, Phil has absolutely always been my favorite and like it just his bass just sets it apart from every other band always so yeah it's really really cool to hear that background information from you I super appreciate it uh, um, he's, he always loved one more uh, thing Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Sorry. I was going to say, he always loved science fiction books. He read a lot of them and uh, paid attention to that. So he had that forward-looking way of playing bass. And look at the basses he got to play. They were, like, almost intergalactic, you know. And uh, his playing was so beyond what so many other bass players would even attempt. So he filled the bill of being science fiction living okay what's your other question i was just gonna i was gonna say um when you were doing all the rhythm devil stuff back in the grateful dead days and uh -huh. you would jam with the band and you do all the background footage um there's this guy christopher hazard who's been converting all the old footage to 1080 and you can wow. see you in the back and all this great footage now playing like these bells and all the stuff that you would do behind the drums during the space when you were doing, when you were part of the rhythm, rhythm devils. And oh, I don't know yeah, if you've that out yet great. or not. I haven't but, seen yeah. that. I haven't seen that. No, I haven't seen that. What's the guy's name? Who did it? Who? It's a YouTube channel and it's called Christopher Hazard spelled out normal Christopher. Okay. And then hat okay. H A Z A R T. And the footage is incredible. Uh, the, he wow. changes all the old stuff to, to, to 1080 so it looks killer and you can see everything and you're in the back banging these bells and doing all this cool shit it's rad well, you gotta because, see uh, it. they were always yelling at me come on man and nobody else would uh, yeah. sometimes the other guys would but so I really had to do a lot of that because I didn't mind it and we would do all kinds of stuff I'd surprise them with jackhammers and fucking explosives and uh, all kinds of stuff train whistles and things that had them jumping but we had a lot of oh, fun yeah. with that 
and it was all meant for the goodness of, of music. So I'm going to have to check that out. I was just looking at pictures of me playing my motorcycle with those guys, which usually worked on not fade away just perfectly. Revenue. <laughs> Excuse me. What'd you say? Revving it up during the during not fade to to the beat. Exactly, <laughs> it worked perfect. With straight pipes on a Harley Davidson. On a, at that time, it was a Panhead or a Lowrider that I had, and boy, it sounded great, man. Fuck yeah! We put the mic. We we'd hold the mic right on the back thing, and we there's certain stages we could get the bike right up on stage. Like Winterland was one of them. We started doing it there, and I was lucky enough to always have my motorcycle up there. And boy, there'd be all kinds of bikers and friends around. And if the bike didn't just kick right over now, understand in those days we rode panheads. And uh, if you're a Harley enthusiast, there's a thing you've got to go through. They're very touchy, the carburetor and everything. And you have to do this thing. If you make one mistake, it has to, you have to stand there for a while and let it drain out the carburetor so you, you won't start. Yeah. And so everybody would be watching you. You messed up and you had to kick it over. There were no electric starts, you know, and so... Boy, that was funny, but it would kick over perfectly, man. Right when on call, man. It was great fun to play that with those guys. I might be the only guy that ever played a motorcycle with a band. I don't know. That might be a record right there. You might be. You might be. <laughs> I mean, it was. They loved it, too, so that was fun. My favorite time was when I pulled a jackhammer on stage, and they didn't see me. I had to run the cables, and I mean, the, the air lines to it. And I had these guys outside on the street, they had these long lines. It was at RFK Stadium. And I just put it on the riser and everything went flying every which way. They were grabbing every symbol and all their stuff. It was funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun in, in the Rhythm Devils, man. And it, it took a group effort to do that, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, you look like you're having a blast in that footage, so you should check some of it out, man. It's fucking cool. Well, now, that the, now that the technology is sped it up so you can see it clear again you know it looks great so and it's christian and what's the last name again i'm sorry uh, uh, it's, uh, it's christopher it's christopher hazard on uk christopher hazard got it okay got it thank yep. you all right my man oh, yeah. good talking to you norty i'll talk to you later buddy is that thanks bro later okay take care all right and who do we have next Next, we're going to take it over to Pat.